Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a topic that I've gotten a lot of questions on, and that is how to properly size your solar components. And the three main components that you need to size is your solar panels, your battery bank, and your inverter. Now I'm making this video because when I was assembling my components for my solar system, it was really hard to find all the information I needed to accurately size it. It was just scattered all over the internet and there was no one place to show how to size everything. And because of this, our solar system isn't as perfect as it could be. It's oversized in one area and undersized in a couple more. So hopefully by watching this video, you'll be able to more accurately size your solar system than I was before I knew what I know now. Now the first solar component we're gonna talk about are your solar panels. The job of the solar panels is to replenish the electricity you use every 24 hour period in the seven or so hours of useful sunlight you have each day. So to determine how many solar panels you'll need, you'll first need to determine what your typical electrical usage will be on a typical day. You are just in the way, you're in the way now. You're, you're in the way. Yes, you are. No, you're in the... You're, now you're very much in the way. You're... <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're in the way now. You gotta go. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yes, I love you too. Okay, go on. Go on. <laughs> Grab a piece of paper and a pen and create a table with the number of rows equal to how many electrical devices you typically use in a given day, and then various columns. In the first column will be each electrical device. In the second column is the amperage draw of each of those electrical devices from a 12 volt battery source. And the third column is the number of hours you plan to use each of those electrical devices each day. So for example, in a typical day, Jenny and I will use our lights, our two laptops, our inverter, our electrical cooking devices, and there is always some parasitic drain. Our lights combined draw about one amp. Our two laptops draw about 13 amps together. The inverter draws three amps. Our cooking device draws a whopping 100 amps. And we have about one amp constant parasitic drain. Now our lights we may use for about four hours in the morning and at night. Our laptops we use basically all day, so about eight hours. The inverter is also about eight hours. Our cooking devices we only use for about a half hour. And parasitic drain is all day every day, so that's 24 hours. Now in the final column of this table, we need to find the amp hour usage because that is the real number we're looking for. So to do that, you multiply the amperage draw by the hour usage for each of these devices. So our lights are four amp hours, our laptops are 104 amp hours, our inverter is 24 amp hours, our cooking devices is 50 amp hours, and parasitic drain is 24 amp hours. Then you need to add up the amp hourage usage of all these devices to find out what your total amp hours of draw in a given day. For us, that would be about 206 amp hours. So that final number is the really important number. That 206 amp hours is what our solar panels will need to replace every day in that seven or so hour period of useful daylight sun. Now, depending where you're traveling to, where you live, what your latitude is, how cloudy it is, what season it is, all these things are variables that can affect how much daylight sun you have but for now we're just going to assume seven hours and we'll take all of that stuff into consideration at the end. So for now we're going to assume we get seven hours of useful sunlight every day. So we're going to take that total amp hourage usage. For us it's 206 amp hours and we're going to divide that by seven hours and that gives us the total amps that our solar panels need to generate for seven hours straight. So for us our solar panels need to generate 29.4 amps in full sun. Solar panels are rated in watts, but we know how many amps we need our solar panels to make. So to determine how many watts of solar we need, we'll use the formula watts equals volts times amps. So for now, we're gonna assume that you're not using an MPPT charge controller, but if you are, we'll take that into consideration later, and you'll find that MPPT charge controllers actually make it so you need less watts of solar panels. So for that equation, we'll go ahead and plug in the amp number we found earlier. For us, it's 29.4. And then for volts, we're gonna plug in 18 volts, which is typically what an, a solar panel used for RV solar generates. 
So 18 volts times 29.4 amps gives us the total wattage of solar panels we need, which for us comes out to about 530 watts. Now this number we just found is basically the absolute minimum wattage of solar panels you're gonna need because this is assuming you get seven hours of full sun every day. And we know that's just not gonna happen. There are a ton of variables when it comes to solar. You've got cloud cover, tree cover, your latitude, the season, all kinds of things that really determine how much sun you get. So at this point, we're gonna to wanna to apply a factor of safety as a percentage based on how many cloudy days you think you're gonna have, uh, whether or not there's gonna be some of the sky blocked by trees. For instance, if you're staying in national forests, you're gonna have kind of straight above you uncovered, clear to the sky, but the sides of you are gonna be covered in trees that block the morning and evening sun from you. So for us, a good factor of safety, I think, would be about 30%. So we, we would wanna multiply that number we came up with, 530 watts, by 1.3 to apply a 30% factor of safety. And now this is a much better number for wattage of solar panels you may need. Now at this point, we also haven't taken into consideration whether or not you're going to have an MPPT charge controller or not, instead of a regular PWM charge controller. MPPT charge controllers can increase the amount of amperage sent to the batteries by as much as 30%. So if you're gonna be using an MPPT charge controller, you can then go ahead and decrease the number we just found after applying a factor of safety by about 30%. And now this is a more accurate wattage of solar panels that you'll need. Now we do have an MPPT charge controller and I explained kind of how MPPT charge controllers work in the video where I reviewed our entire solar setup. So we can then go ahead and decrease that uh, number of watts that we need in solar panels by a factor of 30% to get our final number and that is 530 watts. Now stick with me here because there's one more factor that may increase how many solar panels you need. And that's whether you're using lead acid batteries or lithium batteries. Lead acid batteries, unfortunately, have a charge efficiency of only 85%. Now what this means is that for every amp sent to the batteries, only 0.85 amps is actually stored for use. So if you have a lead acid battery bank, bad news, you're gonna go ahead and need to increase that final wattage number by 15%. Now we have lithium batteries and they have a charge efficiency nearly of 100%. So we don't need to increase that number anymore because basically every amp sent from the solar controller to the batteries is stored for use. So our final number is still 530 watts. So now that we've sized our solar panels and we know just how many watts we need of solar panels, we can now move on to sizing our battery bank. Now sizing the battery bank is gonna be easy since we've already done the legwork of adding up our electrical usage on a typical day. Now the job of your battery bank is to provide you with power at times when the sun is not shining, such as at night or on cloudy days. Now if you plan on living off the cord like we do, then you need to rely on your battery bank to get you through a string of cloudy days. But if you don't, then you just need to get you through the night. So go back to your electrical usage table and ask yourself, how long do I need my batteries to get me through periods of little to no sunshine? And for us, we would like our batteries to be able to last through a string of three full cloudy days. Now even though solar panels can still make about 25% power during cloudy days, we're gonna go ahead and assume that they make nothing because this will build in a factor of safety into our calculation, which is always a good thing. So looking at our example electrical usage table, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of the electrical cooking appliances because we don't use those on cloudy days because we know we need to conserve a little bit of electricity. So we just cook with gas. So we're gonna go ahead and take those off the table. But we still use our lights, our laptops, our inverter, and there is always parasitic drain. So therefore, on cloudy days, our electrical usage amounts to about 156 amp hours. Now we wanna get through three cloudy days in a row, so we need to multiply 156 amp hours by three to give us a number of 468 amp hours. Now the type of battery bank you plan on using comes into play and makes a huge difference. Sorry lead acid users, you're about to get hit again. Since the allowable depth of discharge of a typical lead acid battery is only 50%, we have to multiply the 468 usable amp hour number that we need by two to get the rated capacity of a lead acid battery bank that we need 
to get through a string of three cloudy days. So this comes up to an incredibly large battery bank of 936 amp hours. Now if you plan on using a lithium battery bank, things start to look a little better. Lithium batteries allow a depth of discharge of 80% or more. So to find out the total rated capacity that you need for your battery bank, take the usable amp hours you need, so for us 468 amp hours, and divide it by 0.8. And that gives us a total rated amp hour capacity of the battery bank we need to get us through a string of three cloudy days of 585 amp hours. We use lithium batteries, so that number is the one we're gonna go with. So now we've got our solar panel sized, our battery bank sized, now all we need to do is figure out the size of inverter we need. Good news because sizing the inverter is probably the easiest of all. Now the job of the inverter is to convert 12 volt DC electricity from the battery bank to 120 volts AC power, send that to the AC panel to power your 120 volt AC appliances. Now the inverter only needs to be large enough to power all the AC appliances that you plan on running simultaneously. So go ahead and go back to your electrical usage table that we've been using and only look at the AC appliances. We can forget about DC drawing electronics for now. The inverter doesn't power those. That power comes straight from your battery bank. So if we look at our example electrical usage table, the only AC appliances we have on it are the laptop and our electrical cooking devices. And let's say we wanna run both of those at the same time. So the amperage of the two laptops and our electrical cooking devices combined is 113 amps. So now we're gonna use watts equals voltage times amps again to determine the size of inverter we need. So we can go ahead and plug in 113 amps and then also plug in 12 volts. And that gives us a total wattage that our inverter needs to be of 1,356 watts. Now when it comes to inverters, you really don't wanna be pushing the boundary on the maximum rated wattage output of the inverter. You wanna oversize by quite a bit. So in our case, the, wa the wattage of the inverter we need is 1,356 watts. Now we could go with a 1,500 watt inverter, but in my opinion, that's really pushing it. So it'd probably be safer to go with a 2,000 watt inverter. And that's it, that's how you size your inverter. So the electrical usage example we've been working with this entire video is very close to the actual electrical usage on a given day for me and Jenny. And the sizing analysis we've done in this video shows that we require 530 watts of solar, a 585 amp hour lithium battery bank, and a 2000 watt inverter. Now in actuality, we have 480 watts of solar, a 400 amp hour lithium battery bank, and a 3000 watt inverter. Now the total wattage of our solar panels is really close to what we need. We could really use 200 amp hours more lithium battery bank capacity and our inverter is just overkill. Now hopefully you found this video helpful and it will help you to accurately size your solar array, your battery bank, and your inverter. And if there are any questions that I didn't answer in this video or if there's something that you didn't quite understand, feel free to leave a comment below or comment on the blog post on our website for this video. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you want more videos from us, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want more details on what I talked about today, go ahead and check out the link to the blog post in the description below. Catch you guys later.